My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Outer positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media and join the private Facebook group to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support this podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Thank you for listening to the Recover Your Soul podcast and being part of this very special community. This episode is one of the bonus episodes that Apple Podcast subscribers and Patreon members have had access to first, and now I want to share it with you. If you enjoy this episode and you want more Recover Your Soul every week, you too can be an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member and support the production of this podcast and the Soul Recovery Mission. The links are in the show notes. Welcome back to the bonus episodes of Recover Your Soul. You're listening because you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or a Patreon member, which means that you personally are supporting Recover Your Soul. And I want to thank you very much for your support. So Christy, one of our Patreon members, had said that she was interested in hearing more about direct Al-Anon literature. So I thought, let's dive into the 12 steps. And by using different literature, different books, different things in the Al-Anon quiver, the last two steps we used out of Hope for Today. And today I'm going to be reading out of Paths to Recovery, Al-Anon Steps, Traditions, and Concepts. And I didn't have this book before. When she made that suggestion, I got on Amazon and ordered a bunch of different Al-Anon books that I hadn't read before. And I've really enjoyed taking a deeper dive into the Al-Anon literature. We are on step three. And this is actually a little bit of a longer reading. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on it. And as usual, I will do the reading and then I will do Rev Rachel commentary about how it's affected me in my life and and how it is connected to soul recovery. So let's get going. In step one, we learn that many of our problems may have resulted from our ineffective efforts to manage our own lives and the lives of other people. In step two, we came to believe that higher power could help restore us to sanity. It naturally flows that the next step would be turning to that power for help. Some members shorten the first three steps to, I can't, God can, I'll let him. That's a great reminder that we can use every single day. I know that for me, I still have plenty of situations that come up every day in my life where I catch myself trying to exert some level of control or thinking about it. And so it really helps to have a quick something that you can use to remind us that, oh, look at me, I'm trying to do something that is outside of myself. Obviously, If our past efforts have been futile, and if we believe that a power can help us, it makes sense to allow that power to do so. In the first phase of step three, quote, made a decision, end quote, shows us that we have choices. We make the decision when we're ready. Everyone works through the steps at their own pace. In many cases, returning to earlier steps over and over until we're ready to move to the next one. I know that for me, I go through the steps every single day in different ways, all of them, and have been working on finding soul recovery steps. I've been really working on how how to take these concepts and move it into a broader soul recovery phase, but we'll talk about that later. But the whole point isn't that you just go through them from 1 to 12 and then you're like, oh good, I'm done. Uh, No, 
this is a lifelong progress because everything continues to happen outside of us. We do all of this beautiful work and we have these spiritual awakenings and we think and feel differently and life continues to show up. And so we have an opportunity every day to return to these practices to remember who we are and how to have happy and healthy lives. Okay, let's see over and over. Okay, no one compels us to turn over our will. This is a choice that we're making. We choose to try this because the way of life we created on self-will alone was neither satisfying or serene. I know it wasn't for me. What decision are we making? We're asked to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Few of us are able to immediately turn over everything in our lives. Making the decision to do so is merely a commitment to try. I love that. It says, became willing, right? So willingness made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him as step three. What I love is that there's a willingness that's talked about in the steps. It doesn't say that you have or that you're promised or that you have to be perfect. What it's saying is that I'm going to try. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to make attempts to change my patterns. I'm going to observe and be curious about myself. I'm going to have a commitment to try. To illustrate this aspect of step three, A member posed the following. It says, three frogs sat on a lily pad. One made a decision to jump off. How many frogs are left? The answer is three. The frog merely made a decision to jump. He hadn't actually jumped yet. So be gentle to yourself. Be gentle to yourself in this one. I I think that we judge ourselves so harshly and that guilt that we feel, that shame that we feel, is a large part of why we're trying to fill some sort of void, why we're needing something, why we're hurting, why we make the decisions. So the first step is to let go of your own judgment of yourself. And then we have the energy and the ability to let go of the judgment of others. It goes on to say, we often have to take one problem or person at a time and work on turning that one thing over to our higher power. Most often, the alcoholic in our lives is the person we first need to turn over. We learned in step one that we're powerless over alcohol, that the alcoholic, and we cannot control or change him or her. So we can work on turning our desire to change the alcoholic over to God. I know for me that this is something that I still do every day with my kids and my husband, that There are things that I observe in them and I watch them doing so well in so many areas of their life. And then I see pain and hardship in other areas of their life. And as a mother and as a wife, I want to help. I want to fix it. I want to do something about it. I have worry. And having this step gives me immediate relief in the reminder that I am not in charge of them, that I'm working on connecting with my higher power for myself and my will of how I am in the world and that I can trust that I'm going to be okay. And that will allows me to trust that they're going to be okay, that the choices of the things that I do or say to really allow myself to connect with my sense of my higher power and make sure that what's coming out of my mouth or my actions is of love and of grace, and of awareness, and of guidance, and intuition from something other than my fear, something other than my pain, something new and different, something that actually isn't insane, that has sanity, that has a sense of sereneness to it. It goes on to say, once we turn a few of our problems over to the care of God, many of us feel a great sense of relief. Depending on our higher power can increase our independence from the opinions, needs, and demands of others. This is such a beautiful line. Depending on our higher power, allowing our higher power to be in charge, being under the will of this higher power, it can increase our independence 
from the opinions, needs, and demands of others. It says we no longer look outside of ourselves to other people for validation. Wow, I spent so much of my life looking to outside people for validation, for love, for acceptance, to be told that I was okay. And to come to a place where it's okay to want that, it's okay to have people say nice things or to get credit at work for something. It doesn't mean that you crawl under a rock and you don't do your best, that you aren't in excellence of your life. What it means is you're not looking for that to show you or say to you that you are okay, that that is the validation of who you are as a human being. It means that it's the icing on the cake. It doesn't mean it's the cake. It says, asking for help from a higher power is an admission that we cannot do it alone and gives us assurance that we are not alone. I know that loneliness has been an issue in my life, and I'm going to do a whole podcast on that because I was just sitting with some girlfriends in the backyard the other day, and we all just assumed that each of us was doing just fine, and so we weren't reaching out to each other when we needed connection because our assumption is that everybody else is fine and that we're the only ones that are feeling lonely. And I think that reaching out and having contact with healthy relationships is so important. And that knowing that we are not alone, that there is an inside connection to a higher power, and that when we have that connection, then when we connect with the other people, it's not from such a needy place. It's from a more desire to to interact with people on a whole different level to share instead of to need so i love that this part of our higher power reminds us that we can't do it alone and that it gives us a reminder that we are not alone so important especially when we're dealing with people with addiction in our lives it goes on to say for those of us willing to be helped but still not convinced that god is the one to do it The last phrase of step three, quote, as we understood him, end quote, reinforces our freedom of choice. As in step two, we're free to define the God of our understanding. We do not even have to use the word God. We can seek a higher power, a higher consciousness or wisdom, and even the love of the group. What matters is that we set aside our willfulness and determination to be right and believe that our higher power however we may define it, will guide us in the right direction. I know that in the rooms, I had people who just said they just replaced God with good. They replaced God with the word love. And for me, that's an immediate, easy switch, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of love, to turn our will and our care over to good to turn our will and our care over to higher mind, higher consciousness, higher power, to the source, to the God mind, to the cosmic mind, whatever that is for you, to spirit. You get to decide what words work for you. It goes on to say, once we've made the decision asked of us in step three, we face the question of how to do it. There are many ways to approach turning our will and our lives over as there are definitions of God. Most find it necessary to ask God of our understanding to help us. For those from religious backgrounds, the concept of prayer is comfortable, and others may find traditional prayer difficult. Thinking of prayer as talking to our higher power may help. Again, in Al-Anon, we're free to define our higher power as we choose and to decide how we will communicate with that higher power. Remember that asking our higher power for help does not mean asking for specific results. Asking God to execute our will, right? So it's when we are asking for help, we're not saying, help me do what I want. (laughs) Oh, I did that. I did that my first whole time of being in recovery. I really just thought the more connected I was, the more I could demand that it was how I wanted it. And it didn't work out all that well. Turning our will and our lives over to God means that we put the outcome in God's hands. Whew. That's a big one. That's a big one. I think sometimes that I look through the world as if I'm looking through a keyhole. Remember those old doors that have that big 
skeleton key that's that you can look through and i'm just got my eye pressed to this little keyhole looking at this little tiny view of what it seems like my world is and if you step back there's so much more there's so many more rooms there's so much more of the universe there's so much that i don't understand i'm just pressed up against this little tiny view of what I think I know based on my experience, my past, my education, my views, there's so much more. And so when I'm pressing my will, what I think I want the outcome to be, I'm forgetting that there's an entire universe more to look at, that I couldn't possibly know or understand everything. I also love the idea of prayer, that through prayer and meditation, what is prayer and meditation for you? For some people, prayer and meditation means doing guided meditations and writing out very specific rote prayers that are easy for them to read because they don't feel like they can come up with stuff themselves. Awesome. Good for you. That's a great way to do it. Other people feel like they just want to speak out into the world, whatever it is that they're thinking or feeling or needing. Awesome. Whatever that is for you. Some people need it to be perfectly quiet. Some people don't. Some people can do prayer and meditation sitting on a bus. Whatever it is for you. This is the beauty of your connection with higher power, your spiritual world being uniquely yours. Somebody else may need to wake up first thing in the morning and have it be quiet and put on their meditation music, and that's how they connect. Good. Fantastic. Do what works for you. There is no right way here. It's all about what is your connection. But the answer is consistency, that when we build that muscle when we are consistently meditating and praying and having this conscious contact with higher power, it becomes stronger. It becomes easier to access. It becomes easier to hear and listen to that still small voice. So whatever it is for you, I just say, just practice it every single day, a little bit every single day, even if it's just a couple minutes. It goes on to say, we can practice talking to God. Some members find that starting and ending the day with a serenity prayer is helpful. Others ask directly for God to take their will and their life for the day. If we lack confidence, we can ask higher power to provide it. If we have trouble verbalizing our thoughts, we can use the familiar prayer or just say, please help me. We can make up our own prayer. One member says, God, guide me with my activities today and keep me from idly dwelling on yesterday's and tomorrow's. Another simply says each morning, God, you and I are going to have a great day. And if it's not so good, I know you can handle it. Someone else suggests, God, help me live an honest life. And another uses a single phrase or word like, be with me today, guide me, help, or thank you. As in all the steps, we keep the focus on ourselves and ask for guidance, right? We keep the focus on ourselves. A problem can also be handed over to higher power by writing it down or putting it in a special place. Some people make a God box or a God can. It's an actual can that's called a God can because I can't, but God can. To hold their written requests or prayers. This has had an advantage as it can be revisited several months later. And sometimes we discover with pleasant surprise that the problems placed there were literally gone and we had forgotten about them. I know I have a little prayer box that a friend of mine gave me. And when I'm really finding myself ruminating and stirring on about it, it helps to write it down and put it in the box. To physically take something and hand it over feels different than just in my mind saying, I'm going to hand that over. And so I love the idea of the God box. And just simple statements. It goes on to say, as in the first two steps, Step three can bring about enormous relief, taking the responsibility for our problems and our loved ones off our shoulders. Yes, as we grow in the problem, we find ourselves returning again and again to these basic principles when faced with new challenges. 
Step one, two, and three, complete our preparation to begin taking action in our recovery with the steps that follow. We know that we cannot control everything and everyone in our lives, that turning our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand God is our hope for serenity and peace of mind. Letting go of the responsibility of others. That was the episode just this week, actually. When we begin to allow ourselves to not feel responsible for everyone, the weight that's lifted off of our shoulders, and it's hard sometimes to feel like, what does it mean to be under the will of a higher power? How do we do that? We haven't lived like that for so long. And I also love that this reading reminds us that it's just a desire to try. It's being gentle to yourself. It's being graceful with yourself, having self-compassion and being curious about how we're going to do things differently, how we're going to let go of control, how we're going to let go of feeling responsible for everything. And in soul recovery, we're turning the attention to ourselves. And I know that when I'm really in my heart space and I'm listening to that intuitive guidance, I can feel that will of a higher power is what's flowing through me versus my ego's will that wants to know, that wants to be right, that wants some sort of promise, really, that it's going to be a certain way, that I, I want to know what the end is before I watch the whole movie. That allowing a different place of letting go and being curious of what the other will is, not the ego will, but the spirit will, has changed everything. And then we're in the flow and the allowing things to turn out however they are and to be able to make decisions for ourselves that may not be decisions that we thought that we could make. It may be that in this clarity, in this connection with higher power, the will of higher power, it may mean that we make choices for ourselves that allow other people to be uncomfortable. That we realize that we can't control a situation so much that we have to leave it. Or we discover that we can accept it and that we can live a life of our own side by side with somebody who's in dysfunction and not have it be tearing us apart. But we can make those decisions from our place of self-connection, of empowerment for ourselves, of connection to our higher power, knowing that we're doing the will of the higher power and not living from the expectations and the needs and the wants and the shoulds of everybody else around us, that these choices that we're making come from a holier place. If you haven't listened to the episode that I did on the third step prayer, I would recommend that you listen to it. I love the third step prayer. It's a prayer that I say almost every morning before I wake up. God, I offer myself to you to build with me and do with me as you will. Relieve me of the bondage of self so that I may better do your will and take away my difficulties so that victory over them can bear witness to those I could help with your power and your love and your way of life. When you're an alcoholic and you do the third step, this is the prayer that you do in ritual and ceremony with your sponsor when you are ready to let go and to turn it over. And I love that the third step prayer talks about build with me, build with me a life, take away my difficulties, remove my bondage of self. These are such key elements in being connected to a higher power, being connected to a greater source, believing and trusting that there is beauty and potential and purpose and fullness available to all of us, that we can have this unlimited joy, that the life that we've had that has had this heaviness and darkness can be relieved. Connect with me and set up a spiritual coaching session if you're interested in working on more of this or discussing it or having ideas of how to incorporate this into your life. I also encourage you to join this monthly support group that is the first Monday of every month and, and be in community. 
If you're not already attending Al-Anon groups, they're everywhere, online and in person. Being connected with people and doing this work with other people and having that support helps us connect more deeply with spirit. It helps us get out of our head and our self-will. So I encourage you to get support somewhere from people who will help you be your healthiest, truest self and turn your will over to this higher power. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my path to soul recovery? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's how. Here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with your higher power, whatever that is for you, and to discover and then step forward into a happy and healthy life. You can also become part of our soul recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's by Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website to get your Zoom link. Recover your souls on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, lots of ways to connect. And there's even a private Facebook group that will allow for more communication and conversation about soul recovery. There is also an extra bonus episode every Friday if you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member. I'd also love all of the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time to give me five stars, a quick review, and to share the podcast with your friends and family, we're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you for going to the website and pushing the donate button, whatever donation feels right to you. This means so much to me because I have this enormous mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, your being part of this community is helping that to happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul.